Imagine, if you will, a future where humans are no longer limited by their biological bodies. What does it mean to be human in such a world? Let's delve into a philosophical inquiry that takes us beyond our skin and bones to the core of cognition and consciousness. We're exploring the realm of post-humanism, where our biological limitations are transcended and we are defined by our minds rather than our physical forms. This is the world of post-humanism, a concept that challenges our understanding of humanity and its future. Post-humanism did not just spring into existence, it is a product of philosophical evolution. The genesis of post-humanism lies in the fertile soil of philosophical inquiry, nurtured by seminal ideas from a variety of disciplines and watered by the inevitable march of scientific progress. Let's take a step back to the late 19th century with the advent of Friedrich Nietzsche's concept of the Übermensch or the Superman. This was one of the first times humanity was seen as something that could be surpassed, a state to be transcended. Nietzsche's Übermensch was an idealized vision of human potential, a symbolic figure that represented humanity's capacity for self-overcoming. Fast forward to the mid-20th century, the era of existentialism. Here, philosophers like Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir advocated for the idea of radical human freedom and the ability to construct one's essence. This idea was a stepping stone towards post-humanism, as it emphasized human plasticity and the potential for change. However, the birth of post-humanism as we know it today can be traced back to the late 20th century with the advent of cybernetics and artificial intelligence. These technological advancements challenged our traditional view of humanity. They forced us to question what it means to be human when machines can mimic human intelligence and when our bodies can be enhanced or replaced by technology. Post-humanism emerged as a response to these questions. It is a philosophical perspective that rejects the notion of a fixed human nature. Instead, it embraces the idea that humans are mutable beings, capable of changing and evolving beyond our current biological and psychological limits. Posthumanism also incorporates insights from fields like cognitive science, neuroscience, and information theory, which have expanded our understanding of consciousness, identity, and the mind-body relationship. These insights have further blurred the line between humans and machines, between the biological and the artificial. So, posthumanism is a product of both philosophical and scientific evolution, a concept that has grown out of our ever-evolving understanding of ourselves and the world around us. At the core of posthumanism is a radical rethinking of what it means to be human. In this philosophical movement, traditional concepts of humanity are being challenged and redefined. It's not about simply adding a chip here or a robotic limb there, it's about a fundamental transformation of the human condition. One of the primary tenets of posthumanism is the idea of humans transcending their biological limitations. This doesn't only refer to physical enhancements but also to cognitive ones. Imagine, for instance, the ability to augment our memory with digital storage, or consider the potential of neuroenhancements that could boost our intelligence or creativity. The line between the human and the machine blurs, and we begin to see ourselves as more than just flesh and blood. This brings us to the second key concept the merging of humanity and technology. Posthumanists envision a future where the boundary between the artificial and the natural is not only blurred, but potentially abolished. The body becomes a site of potential modification and enhancement, not through traditional methods like exercise or education, but through technological interventions. Now this doesn't mean we'll all be walking around as cyborgs with robotic limbs and artificial eyes. The vision of posthumanism is more nuanced. It's about the integration of technology into our bodies in ways that are seamless and invisible. It's about using technology to extend our capabilities, to give us new senses, new abilities and new ways of interacting with the world. But posthumanism doesn't stop at augmentation. It also contemplates the idea of humans becoming something entirely new. This isn't just about improving or extending what we currently are. It's about the potential for us to evolve into entirely new forms of life. This might sound like the stuff of science fiction, but it's a serious philosophical proposition. It raises profound questions about identity, consciousness, and what it means to be a person. If we replace our biological parts with synthetic ones, at what point do we stop being human and start being something else? If our minds can be uploaded into computers, do we retain our personhood, our sense of self? These questions don't have easy answers, but they're the kind of questions that posthumanism forces us to grapple with. It challenges us to think beyond our current conceptions of what it means to be human, 
to imagine new possibilities for our future. So, to sum up, posthumanism is a radical rethinking of humanity. It's about transcending our biological limitations, merging with technology, and potentially evolving into something entirely new. It's not just a philosophical curiosity, it's a vision of the future that could fundamentally reshape our understanding of what it means to be human. In the posthumanist view, our biological bodies are not the end of our evolution, but merely a stepping stone towards something greater. If we accept the premises of posthumanism, what does this mean for our future? This question invites us to explore a landscape of possibilities, each of them teeming with ethical, societal, and existential implications. Let's first consider the ethical implications of posthumanism. As we move towards a future where human and machine may become indistinguishable, we confront questions that challenge our traditional notions of ethics. If we can enhance our cognitive abilities or live beyond our natural lifespan, should we? And who gets to make these decisions? These questions force us to redefine what it means to be ethical in a post-human world. Next, we have the societal implications. A post-human society could be radically different from anything we've known. It might be a world where physical and mental enhancements are not only possible but commonplace. This could lead to new forms of social stratification, where those who can afford enhancements gain significant advantages over those who can't. Alternatively, it could lead to a more egalitarian society, where everyone has access to enhancements that improve their quality of life. The societal implications of posthumanism are as diverse as they are profound. On the existential level, posthumanism raises questions about what it means to be human. If our bodies and minds can be enhanced or even replaced, what remains of our humanity? Are we still human if we have artificial limbs or synthetic organs? If our minds can be uploaded to a computer, is that still us? Or is it something else entirely? These questions challenge us to reevaluate our understanding of identity, consciousness, and existence itself. But it's not all existential dread and ethical conundrums. Posthumanism also presents potential benefits. It could lead to technological advancements that improve our health, extend our lifespan, and enhance our cognitive abilities. It could allow us to overcome physical limitations and mental barriers, opening up new possibilities for human achievement. It could even offer solutions to some of the greatest challenges facing our world today, from climate change to disease. However, embracing a post-human future also comes with risks. The same technologies that could enhance our lives could also be used to control or harm us. Without careful regulation, they could exacerbate social inequalities or be used for nefarious purposes. And as we push the boundaries of what it means to be human, we run the risk of losing something essential in the process. In the end, posthumanism is a philosophical concept that invites us to imagine a future beyond our current human limitations. It challenges us to consider what we might become and what we might risk in the process. It's a journey into the unknown, filled with potential and peril. As with any philosophical concept, posthumanism presents us with a range of possibilities, some exciting, others unsettling. As we look towards the future, it is up to us to navigate these possibilities with wisdom, courage, and a deep respect for the complexity of our human condition. In the last few minutes, we've taken a whirlwind tour of posthumanism. We've journeyed through the philosophical landscape that brought forth this thought-provoking concept. From the roots of Enlightenment humanism, where man was the measure of all things, to the birth of posthumanism, where our very definition of human is challenged. We've explored the core tenets of posthumanism, which propose a radical shift in our understanding of humanity. It forces us to question our place in the universe, our relationship with technology, and our potential to transcend biological limitations. Posthumanism is not just about science fiction-esque scenarios of cyborgs or immortal beings, but also about rethinking our ethical frameworks and societal structures in the face of rapid technological advancement. We've also delved into the implications of posthumanism. It's a Pandora's box, opening up a myriad of ethical, social, and existential questions. What does it mean to be human in a world where artificial intelligence can mimic human thought? What are the potential consequences of blurring the line between the biological and the artificial? And perhaps most importantly, how do we navigate the moral and ethical minefield that these questions present? Whether we embrace it or fear it, posthumanism offers a fascinating lens through which to view our future. The question is, are we ready to take that leap?